Well, hello, everyone. Um, I'll go ahead and dive in um, so that we can get started. I know I have a very short amount of time and there's been lots of other programs going and programs following me. So welcome. Um, I am an assistant professor at Tulsa Community College. I came here about three years ago, um, taught most of my career at Redlands Community College, which of course used to be El Reno Junior College uh, back when I joined them. So this is over 25 years that I've taught in some capacity in the uh, area of psychology, sociology, child development. Um, and I began uh, with uh, not only teaching live, but also concurrent classes, as well as um, correspondence courses, believe it or not, uh, when I first started teaching. So uh, my experience is pretty vast in that area. I started in WebCT, uh, and put a lot of programs in the child development program online uh, back in the day when the Scholars for Excellence program began um, at Redlands, and then um, took a short break uh, from higher education. Uh, gerontology is my field of interest. Um, when the pandemic began, um, of course, I had I didn't even know what Zoom was for the most part, although I had taught um, IETV and, and other avenues there. Um, and I did go back and teach live the semester after COVID. Uh, and really didn't enjoy it, um, the mask situation, as well as many other things. Uh, I've kind of embraced the Zoom. Uh, I like it for many, many reasons. I do have um, several sections this semester that are total um, courses on Zoom. Uh, I have a, a class of nine high school students that are Zoom, as well as um, your typical classes that take place. So. Uh, my experience is vast in this area. Um, I'd love to have time to talk about what you all have found and not found in Zoom, uh, but I'm probably a little bit of an anomaly in that I love teaching via Zoom. I find it to be a much more engaging way to teach sometimes uh, for a variety of reasons. And I also think we need to know that Zoom is here to stay uh, in some capacity or another. Uh, I always think of all of our Blackberries. So at some point we may not be using Zoom, but be teaching in a whole different uh, way. But it is an interesting avenue that we've all had to embrace in one capacity or another, and hopefully not to the extent that we had to during our COVID epidemic. Um, there is a monitor for chat. I do tend to get excited. And uh, once I put the PowerPoints off, I'll, I'll not notice the chat as well as I should. So um, this is actually a good example of one of the things I do. Um, each time I teach, I assign a student to be in charge that day. So they take care of the chat for me, um, as well as doing all kinds of things that uh, are related to that. Um, you know, when you put a video on and you don't know it's not, no, there's no sound involved. Um, so I assign a student each class period to be in charge of the IT component of that, um, kind of is in another engaging way to get people going. Um, this presentation is available to you. I put my email in the chat. You are welcome to email me and I'd be happy to share the PDF version of it for you. Um, it's much longer than what we have to, have to do today. So um, I'd love to share the, the whole results with you. I do a little bit of research each semester with how students are pleased or unpleased with the Zoom um, experience. So I get a lot of feedback on that uh, in an anonymous fashion. One of the things that's bothersome to me right now is uh, if you all were my students, I'd have you turn your cameras on and I know we're professionals, so uh, that's fine. Uh, but of course I teach psychology, so I talk about classical conditioning and the response, thank you. There's a few people, thank you. Uh, we do a lot of this uh, in my classes and this and all kinds of things uh, to get people engaged and make sure uh, that I know. The class I have that is high school students, nine of them, they're all in bed. Uh, every morning when they come to me, I can see their headboards and their uh, <laughs> walls and all that good stuff. Uh, and I make comments about that. So if somebody doesn't have their camera on, I tend to call on them. Um, and again, that's a little bit of conditioning to say if your camera's on, you're less likely to get called on uh, during the time. But let me dive into the presentation so that you can get that information. But again, I would welcome questions um, as you go forward, especially at the end, if we have time for that, I'll hurry through. And I am gonna slip through some slides um, that um, are, are um, part of my whole presentation. I know all of you probably have Zoom etiquette. And again, I'm not gonna read through this for you. Um, you've probably seen it in one capacity or another and have your own things. Um, but I put this up in the 
beginning of class just to let students know kind of what my um, etiquette is, um, but I don't refer to it again after that. Um, so here I am in my Zoom. Uh, every class period, I have a different background. Sometimes I ask them to submit. Uh, this is a Toy Story background, obviously, but every, every class period, I have a different background. A lot of times they'll make requests like, I don't watch Game of Thrones, but I have people who want a Game of Thrones throne. Uh, so I do that for sure. Uh, anything that, that makes them more engaged. So here's my 15 tricks in 30 minutes. Uh, ready, go. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel with this short of a presentation. So there's my backgrounds. Um, again, I try to do generational things. I'm a social scientist, so I love to make sure that they feel popular uh, and that I, I sort of am a cool professor. I'm not, but I give it a shot just to see how cool I can try to be. Um, and we just hit 25 years of um, anniversary for Blue's Clues, um, my children are, my children are 21 and 24, so I do have a lot of experience with that generation, and actually uh, one of my areas of interest is generational differences, especially as it relates to nonprofits and um, community colleges, so I do try to hit also on the adult uh, student that is in my classroom. You can find these everywhere. You Google them up. You can Google cool Zoom backgrounds and a lot of things will pop up. There's also obviously videos uh, about that. So um, engaging students, I do a lot. And again, I've taught on Blackboard for many years. I've always had um, races on Blackboard. So when I do a discussion board, um, I call it a race. So everybody has to post uh, and you can't post similar things. So that way, A, they're reading their posts of other individuals as well as getting on there quickly. So the beginning semester uh, in whatever class I teach, I ask for them to submit an inspirational video that's about five minutes in length. Now, again, I'm a social scientist, so that's inspirational videos, but I've also um, encouraged those in other disciplines to do this as well, whether it be college algebra in uh, mass media or college algebra in the, in the real world or whatever it is, ask them to post examples of that. Um, and as a result of that, I have a folder, I put those all in and every semester to start class, I start with an inspirational video. It allows me to give them time to get on, so to speak. You know, you've got those kind of hangers on that come late in the game. Um, so they're not as interrupting because the inspirational video is going. And you'd be surprised how many people are like, when are you going to use my inspirational video? So again, an engaging way to say, here's your contribution. And of course, it's funny how they um, are, are a wide variety of topics and interests, but they almost always relate to the lecture I have ready to go. So it's almost uncanny how um, it can be a great uh, segue into, okay, here's how this looks in the world. Here's how this looks in academia uh, to uh, apply the concepts that I'm working on. Um, I've also had students ask me, well, do you mean I need to make a video? Um, and so I think it would be fun too to have them maybe middle of the semester to create a TikTok like video um, so that they would present that. And then again, I would hold those uh, and maybe close the show as I call it uh, at the end of class uh, with a TikTok video that a student has made. And again, that could be uh, history, that could be algebra, that could be um, how uh, healthcare providers are represented, but each time present that video that, that starts them off. So those are students selected. Again, it's, it's um, if I put it in the discussion board, it would be a race. I don't put the inspirational videos in the discussion boards because um, I like to hold them in my email box so that I can use them in each class period. You all know two truths and a lie. Uh, this is a good way to start an introductory class for students. Uh, again, I always caution my students, and I think it's true in every class, but in psychology class, sometimes people really overshare. And I'll tell you, I see this in Zoom more than I do in the classroom setting because they're in their environment. So they may feel a lot more comfortable sharing in the moment and then really regret it later. So I always start psychology class with starting out with that. Be careful that when you share, you're comfortable sharing because Again, um, you know, everything's on film, so to speak. Um, I don't actually videotape my lectures or my class periods is a better way to say it because I want students to participate. I want students to come. Uh, but again, I always caution people, they're individuals taping this lecture because they have a phone. Um, so they can tape their own lectures if they so desire. 
you all know about the, the joys of Blackboard. And of course, um, this is, uh, you can get tutorials on all this stuff. But again, the more engaged we can get people to be, the better. I like to use polls because the um, central theme of all of my courses is critical thinking. I like to teach critical thinking skills. And so I always tell my students, I, my biggest hope for you this semester is for you to leave here knowing less than when you came to class the first day. And I repeat that to them because they are really shocked by that, right? I want you to know less when you leave my class at the end of the semester than when you walked in. And of course, what I mean by that is we don't know a lot, especially when it comes to stuff like human behavior, but what science, of any sciences, do we know a lot, right? You know, the whole Pluto thing, right? Uh, is Pluto a planet or isn't it? Tells you that even hard science isn't an absolute. And so as a result, I like to use polls because it shows them how terrible most research is that they're gonna read, especially in popular media. So sometimes I'll create a terrible question and put it in the polls and ask them to answer. And then afterwards, we critically analyze what happened there? Why was that a terrible question? And why were you frustrated that you couldn't give an answer that you thought was possible? This all builds toward um, their mock research project that they do at the end of the semester. And that's a whole nother presentation that I do in live and in my online classes. There's the discussion boards. Uh, again, I am asking them to put all kinds of information. I like very much for them to show me what's out there in the popular media. So, um, and the discussion boards always is a race. Always they have to read, um, they'll lose all credit if they post something that's a replication of someone else. Um, so it's, it's always for them to A, read first, and B, make sure that they see other examples of how things go. So uh, the first discussion board I do in Zoom is for them to post a picture of themselves that um, reveals something to us about how psychology influences their lives. Then they do optical illusions. And then we start on the research project, which again, I don't have time to go into in depth, but each one of those pieces is a piece for the research mock research project at the end of the uh, semester. By the way, that's an intro to psych class uh, a beginning uh, 1000 level course where I want them to be better critical consumers of research, not to do research per se. There's the leader of the day. We talked about that. Uh, the fact that they're required to watch the chat for me uh, to help with IT issues. So um, again, that inspirational video, if they can't hear it or any of the videos that I'm gonna show in class, um, then they do that. And then again, I'm, I'm a Rotarian by trade. So we always have Rotarian of the day. And I think about that, you know, class uh, participant of the day, student of the day, whatever you want to call them. And so then again, we have them share something about themselves uh, when they get on the Zoom uh, that day as well. Um, I know some of you don't like this, but I have children in laps during this time frame. I have tons of dogs and cats and the interactions that take place there. Again, I know exactly what their bedrooms look like. So I know one of the big criticisms that you have of Zoom is that it's not um, uh, personal, but to be quite honest with you, I'd propose the, the opposite, that it is more personal than my classrooms are. I know more about them than I've ever known about my classroom students. Um, a lot of times, you know, again, they, they may be in a car. Um, and when I've given this presentation at other times, people will say, I, I think that's unacceptable. Um, for me, I look at it as what is our objective? Are we trying to have them understand the concepts of intro to psych, for example? Um, I have a student who painted Last semester, she had an easel and paints, and she painted during her entire class period. And again, I know that might irritate some of you, but my question in my own mind is, I wonder if she didn't process what we did in class better while she was painting than if she didn't paint. Um, and that probably engagement point for me is the fact that I had a sister who um, needle pointed in meetings all the time. This was way pre um, stuff like that. She would take her needle pointing with her everywhere um, and she couldn't stand to be in a meeting and not have her hands busy. Uh, she ended up being a college president. So I don't think it slowed her down much. So I think we have to think about what is our final goal? Is sitting in your bed a better way to learn intro to psych than sitting in a classroom chair? 
And that's a great research project that we all probably should do just to see who does better uh, with that. But again, I also think they're more comfortable in approaching us um, when they're in their own environments. As a community college student, uh, teacher, I find, and again, we find this across higher education, right? But we have a lot of people who were traumatized by the classroom setting. And so again, as a result, I think they may feel more comfortable and more student oriented when they're in their own environment than when they're in ours. Okay, we do scavenger hunts. I have to tell you, I do not like this as a student. I'm an academic student, right? I think most of us were probably pretty good students or we wouldn't be where we are today. And I'm one of those people. I'm like, give me the bullets, give me the lecture, let me memorize, I can do all this stuff. I was good at the college game, right? Well, um, so if you told me uh, we're going to do a scavenger hunt today in class, I would say, are you kidding me? I'm telling you the students love this. So as a result, we'll do scavenger hunts, I would say probably about every other class period. Um, the first one I typically do is hats, uh, and I ask everybody to go get a hat. I've never had anybody um, criticize this in depth and everybody goes and gets a hat. And then again, your camera's on, right? And again, the child in the lap may have a hat on, um, the dog comes with a hat on, um, all kinds of people come to that. Now, sometimes I do um, psychology things. So I'll say, um, you know, today we're talking about classical conditioning. So bring me an example of a prop you would use in classical conditioning. Um, sometimes I'll do, I want you to bring me a product that's made in the United States. Um, and they bring that again, I think that would be great in a, a, a situation when you're trying to teach what, um, market value of things are, whatever that is. Um, sometimes it's mac and cheese because pretty much everybody in the world has mac and cheese in their house somewhere, one way or the other. Um, again, pets and children, I don't require them to bring a pet or children, but they do tend to participate in the scavenger hunt uh, in some capacity. And again, I say Ellen because Ellen did this in Zoom um, with her uh, stars, you know, uh, Hollywood people would go out and get things. So it's a very popular thing most people really enjoy. I see there's something in the chat. Oh, crochet your purple blanket, yes, yes. Again, I, I find that interesting. Um, I had a, a in-service with faculty at TCC at one point and somebody was complaining about how people come to class in their pajamas, which I think is funny because they used to come to class in their pajamas in live classes too, right? I mean, they come on campus in their pajamas. And then I looked out and I noticed that one of our faculty members was sitting on her bed in her pajamas. And of course she was a younger faculty member. And I thought, you know, the, the days, now I did, uh, I think it's important uh, if you teach speech, for example, um, I think you might obviously want to say there are points of time when you should be in your pajamas and when you shouldn't, right? And you could even do some study with that, I would say, you know, and have everybody not wear their pajama bottoms with their uh, formal blazer and see, you know, do you present better? Um, how does that look when you are in your bed versus when you're in your dining room table? Um, all those things could be used in that capacity, I think, because I know some of you are saying, please don't do a job interview with your bed headboard in the background. <laughs> That's probably not a good idea. That's a learning moment, a teachable moment for sure. Um, virtual field trips, of course, we, we all figured this out, right? We can have speakers that we would never have. We can go to places we would never go when it comes to Zoom. And this isn't going to stop. Um, you can go to art museums in Europe. You can hear from uh, people that are phenomenal uh, that we would never have. And so, again, I think we have to utilize that for sure. It, and maybe even in the live classroom, we may get to the point where we do some of these things that we have never done before uh, when it comes to visiting places and doing those kinds of things. You know, logistics with field trips are, are very, very hard for a multitude of reasons. So, again, I think this, especially this generation, traditional college student gener generations, um, would be very used to that. Um, and so as a result, you can go to places you would never have gone without it. I sound, I found like, sound like Star Trek, don't I? Go to places you have never been before. 
All right, here's a controversial one. Uh, I always get discussion on this at the end if we have time. And that is, I do use the uh, attendance function within Blackboard. There are lots of ways to do online attendance. Um, I don't give points for attendance. Um, however, when you keep track of attendance, and you all know this for financial aid purposes, we do it now, for retention purposes, we do it now, um, but I don't give points for attendance. However, because I keep track of attendance, especially my high school and my young uh, traditional college students care very much when their attendance is off. So even though it has no value to their grade, they feel it has value of some sort of kind. Now, since I'm in Zoom, I can open it at random times. So I oftentimes set a timer on my phone. And so at the 20 minute mark, I may open attendance. Um, at the end of class, instead of the beginning of class, I may open attendance. So as a result, they have to be engaged to know when attendance happens. And again, you think to yourself, but you don't give any points for it. So why do they care? They care. Uh, the majority of them definitely care. Um, and again, it's that automatic feedback. They can go to attendance and see those big red squares uh, work so much better than my in-class attendance ever did because they go back and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I was there on Wednesday. And by the way, just because you might ask, um, if they don't tell me in within a 24-hour period that they were there, um, I, don't, I don't change it. Um, they're still marked absent even if they were in class. Um, also, just as an aside, um, when I look at the class after class and somebody um, is still on, so to speak, their camera's still on, but they're nowhere to be found, um, I'll mark them as absent. So they know that if you get to the end of class period and your camera's just sitting there wide open and no one's there, I'm going to mark you absent. Um, so that sometimes is a, is a big incentive there, too. This is bingo. You all have used bingo maybe many times. Again, um, you know, I think about nowadays how sometimes I feel like a performer instead of an instructor. And I do. And I want that to happen because um, I am a little more entertaining, engaging, uh, goofy than I would be in a classroom setting. Maybe it's because I'm more comfortable in my home than I am in the classroom, right? Me too. Yes. So uh, bingo, uh, you know, you can use it or not, but um, there's lots of different um, settings out there for you to use this. And again, this is actual Zoom bingo, but you could obviously do lots of cool games now online with um, your instructional material. And in fact, I bet you dime most of you when you get what I used to call an EPAC or whatever it is that you use um, has uh, bingo in, in it with your own coursework. I know their names now because I make them put their names in the, in the uh, cameras. So I learn their names much faster. I refer to them by name much faster. And again, I can uh, engage with them because their names are right there. Uh, and again, I tell them if you say Sam's phone, I don't know what that's all about. So you need to rename yourself so that I've got your class. I was kind of, if you look back at my faculty evaluations, one of the things that sometimes popped up was that I didn't know their names. Um, I hate seating charts. Of course, we used them during uh, COVID to make sure we knew where people were sitting, but um, this is easy peasy. I learned their names very quickly because their names are, are there. And of course, I use it uh, very often. And again, I mentioned to you, I engage with those who do not have their camera on. So even without saying much, they figure that out pretty quickly and they turn their cameras on because they really would prefer me not ask a question uh, about the information at hand, most of them. This is um, a deal where you spin. Uh, it's a nice, I can't see very well because I got a bunch of stuff over all this, but this is called the wheel of, um, um, I think I put the link on there. Maybe not, but I can find it for you if you're interested. And again, you can just Google this and find that you can spin um, the wheel to call on people or spin the wheel to make them the student of the day or spin the wheel for any kind of things. You just put their names in and then it, it does that automatically. But there, there it is, the wheel of names.com. I'm sorry, my participant uh, camera did that. And again, at this point, I would hope that the student would say, hey, Dr. G, it's the wheel of names. That's what I want people to do. And they feel engaged because they're smarter than I am in some aspects, right? So sometimes I legitimately act like I don't know what it is to see if somebody will volunteer it. Lots of trivia night stuff. There's templates out there. You can play Family Feud. Um, again, all kinds of things to do for text 
um, um, test reviews. Um, I don't tend to use group projects in live or Zoom classes. I know some of you love them. Um, one of my children is in grad school. Um, obviously, I went to grad school. I hated group projects. That whole free rider thing drove me nuts. Um, you know, I'd end up doing the whole project and then hope that they put their pieces in eventually. Um, so I've never been a huge fan of group projects. Those of you who love it, obviously, you can do all kinds of things in Zoom in separating people out into groups. Um, but I like Trivia Night much better. And what I do there is I make them into groups so that they have a contest um, and I might randomly assign them uh, and then do the Trivia Night. And I actually give extra credit points very small ones, but the people that win trivia um, get a few extra credit points. Um, most of you probably do student presentations on Zoom. Uh, again, I think students are less intimidated, um, a lot less um, uh, feel that they're um, in front of a group, so to speak, because they can do those from the privacy of their own home. And of course, when the cat walks through or the dog walks through, you know, my biggest fear today is that my fire alarm in my apartment will go off <laughs> because I can't do anything when the fire alarm goes off. So we have to be engaged in the fact that, um, you know, a little person may come through, um, the cats may come through with me too. And actually my students love that. Um, I think you all remember a year ago, February, the big ice storm. Uh, I happened to be in Puerto Vallarta and decided not to go back because of the ice storm. Um, so I taught from um, the town square in a very small town in Mexico. They absolutely loved that. So that semester, because I traveled, um, it was where in the world is Dr. G? We'd play that game uh, to see if they could guess where I am. Uh, I broadcasted once from um, Bentonville, Arkansas, and I told them, I said, I am in the state that has one of the most beautiful museums of American art in the United States. Do you think any of them guessed Bentonville, Arkansas? <laughs> no, but you all probably know it's a gorgeous museum. Um, of course, all the community resources that you have, um, you can use. Um, I do extra credit um, with all these kinds of things. Tulsa Community College does sex education for students every semester, and I um, allow them to do extra credit if they go do that. Um, the TCC has a book of the semester. So uh, if they wanna participate in those kinds of engagement, and it's pretty easy to get uh, attendance, so to speak, from these organizations if you wanna do extra credit in that light. I do love it because you know some of my students could never get extra credit or, and if you don't like extra credit like I do, then use it as a, a, an actual assignment if you want to, uh, to say, okay, I want you to go watch the um, presentation on the 10 signs of Alzheimer's uh, and send me back the certificate of attendance. Um, those kinds of things are definitely available. You probably know about popcorn. Again, you can use this in your real classes. Some people call it whipping. Um, but again, I wanna see if they've summarized the chapter. I better watch my clock. I wanna see if they've summarized the chapter. So a lot of times I'll do popcorn. So I'll say, okay, well, for example, Susan Camp is at the top of my thing. So if we had the time to do this, I'd say, Susan, give me a, a term that's in chapter two about learning and she and you can't repeat again. So I'd go Susan, then Jennifer, then Jerry, then Jean, then Wesley, and they'd have to go pop, pop, pop like this. Again, a less intimidating way uh, to call on people uh, and we go really fast. So. Um, it doesn't, um, they can bring two questions to class if you do that in the live classes. Um, sticky situations are kind of um, case studies, so to speak, you know, about think, pair, and share. These are all different ways to go at this uh, for sure that allow you to think what's happening. Um, one I didn't share here because I obviously have run out of time is what we call the show after the show. And the show after the show is when I stay after class to talk to them. Uh, but again, I think it's intimidating to say my office hours or whatever it is. So, you know, these days, the Ellen Show and all the others have these taped things about how the show went after everybody went home. Uh, and that's what I call it. I call it the show after the show. Uh, sometimes when I have people who want to overshare, which is a problem in psychology class uh, or any of those examples, 
Um, you know, they'll stay and talk to me after class about an issue that they're having with their children or their life or how things are going in school or any of those ways. But again, it's less intimidating thing than to call it uh, office hours. And, you know, a lot of our students don't even know what that means, office hours. I know you've had that discussion before. Um, you know, they don't know what that means. So uh, I like the show after the show. I am about out of time and I don't know if there's any quick questions. I go 50 minutes, right? I don't know how to go 30 minutes. I can't, I can't do that. Uh, Dr. Can, Garrett, real quick, yeah. can you put in your uh, email address into the chat? Yes, it is up at the top, but I'll put it down here I, at the bottom yeah, too. Yeah, I don't so. think I didn't see it. And uh, now I have to have glasses, as you know. Laura.garrett2 at tulsacc.edu. And again, if you'll email me, if you want the PowerPoint, um, what I've left off is the data, uh, the research I've done on what students think about this, whether they like it or don't like it, which they like better. Um, and again, I don't wanna take time out of someone else's presentation, but um, I'm happy to share those things with you if you're interested. It's, it's probably about an hour long PowerPoint. <sighs> I gotta breathe. <laughs> Other questions, comments before they take me off? Well, it's an honor to be with you all. I love sharing this information. Obviously, as you can tell, I love this kind of stuff. Uh, and I enjoy very much being in the Zoom classroom. Uh, it's one of my favorite things during the day to do. So I know that that's odd, but uh, I do enjoy it.